At the dawn of the 2000s, videos with Kimbo Slice blew up the internet, elevating the black bearded giant to the king of the web brawler status. Having made it out of the ghetto, he burst onto the MMA scene and continued to crack chins, now on a professional level. His whole life story resembled an action-packed Hollywood blockbuster with a tragic ending. Today we look back at Kimbo's journey from backyard slobber knockers to global superstardom. Kevin Ferguson was born in the winter of 1974 in the Bahamas. As a child, he moved to the United States with his family and found a new home in Florida. The future neighborhood menace grew up in a poverty-stricken Miami suburb, surrounded by crime from an early age. You know, the neighborhood could have, it was rough. You know, people was dying, you know, you go out to take, take out the garbage, you would go around the corner and you would see a foot and then you just throw the garbage in the dumpster and run back upstairs. And hey, man, just, you know. <laughs> Kimbo, as his friends called him, was often bullied by peers since moving to the US. Classmates laughed at his accent, and the cockiest ones would even try to steal his lunch. Fighting back was the only option. If you want respect, you gotta give respect. And that's what I taught him. Don't let them talk to you any kind of way. And when you're talking to them, you gotta look them straight in the eye. <laughs> Show them that you're not afraid. And he is not afraid. That is one child, he's not afraid. In middle school, he met Mike Ember. The teenagers quickly turned into best buds. Kimbo, already weighed north of 200 pounds, was considered the toughest guy in school and would stand up for his friend in any situation. Had a bond where, you know, if I ever needed anything, he was always there and I did need him. And, you know, so when I was younger and I wasn't developed, I was getting beat up. And he said, you know, that's, that was one thing that I wanted to make sure it didn't happen to anybody that I knew. Chasing the goal of becoming a football player, in high school, Kimbo moved closer to downtown Miami. By his senior year, he was one of the biggest prospects from the East Coast. But nature itself spoiled the youngster's plans. In August 1992, Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida. The 165 mile per hour winds shattered entire city blocks to pieces, leaving some 170,000 people homeless. Among them was Kimbo, who was forced to live in a car for the next month. The school football season was canceled. A year later, the future internet sensation entered the University of Miami, where he stayed for one semester only due to a modest scholarship. After quitting higher education, he tried out for the NFL, but couldn't secure a spot on the Miami Dolphins' first team. Saying goodbye to his childhood dream, Kimbo would turn to the city streets to make money. He washed cars by day and worked as a bouncer at a strip club by night. Two years had passed in this manner, until one day he stumbled upon his old friend. In the early 2000s, Mike Imber was a producer for an adult film production company. Learning about Kimbo's situation, he offered his old pal a job. From then on, the big man drove exhausted actresses around in a limo and guarded the film set. It brought some financial security, but as a young father, Kevin had to provide for his family. He once again turned to Mike, whose resourceful mind generated a brilliant idea. Ember, who had never seen his friend defeated in a scuffle, devised a simple yet genius plan. They would drive around the city, challenging local fighters. One would take bets, and the other would beat the crap out of anyone who had the guts to step up. The scheme worked wonderfully, and Kimbo's biggest talent was put to use effectively. In every neighborhood in every city, there's a guy who's always a tough guy. There's always a bully. There's always someone who just, 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 you know what I'm saying? You know, he feels like he, he has a point to prove. He'll walk around with a chip on his shoulder. And you know, I don't like them type of guys. You know what I'm saying? Initially, everything was done behind closed doors, until Mike decided to hire a cameraman. Kimbo's first fight recorded on tape was against a guy called Big D, a 260-pound thug who had recently been released from prison. Kimbo jumped into the fight right away. Frustrated by the lack of resistance, he decided to cheer up his opponent. After another fall, Big D asked for a break and received a polite refusal. 
Nigga, let's run this! Kimbo gracefully cosplayed Tyson and placed a tight hook. Finish that! Which was the last straw. What's up? Chill, dog. I'm sticking strong, dog. Ember posted the video on his website. It eventually ended up on YouTube and quickly gained millions of views. When Big D's cut up face made rounds on the net, Kimbo was dubbed Slice. Soon the whole world would know the slugger from Miami by that name. Kimbo continued to roam around the neighborhood, starching one tough guy after another. Whoa! The Colossus was terrifying in appearance, and most daredevils couldn't last even three minutes against him. Slice would have two or three scuffles at a time, resulting in multiple immobilized bodies. I was in the ring too. Hit him, Kevin. Hit him, Kevin. I don't think nobody would want to go in the ring with him. I know I wouldn't. New recordings with Kimbo appeared regularly, each time getting more views. Back when the concept of video blogging was in its infancy, the Bahamian native was one of the first to gain the status of a YouTube star. On the wave of bursting popularity, Slice decided to expand the street league. Kimbo one day said, you know, I'm tired of coming to these things and I'm the only one fighting. He's like, you know, when I come, after I fight, I want to watch some fights. He's like, I got the perfect kid. The guy in question turned out to be 18-year-old Jorge Masvidal. The frail youngster was put up against an undefeated heavyweight, but Jorge wasn't bothered in the slightest. The recording would subsequently pave the way for him to the highest echelons of MMA. Like, hey, you want to fight in a couple hours? I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. I never thought it would generate the millions and millions of views that it's generated. It's one of the biggest fights that most people recognize me for still to this day. Oh, you heard it right there. Warriors, man. Whatever it takes. It's all about this. You gotta love this shit. The unbeaten Kimbo gained the status of the street fighting king. He had been seeking a worthy challenge for a while and finally got what he wanted. Police officer Sean Cannon Gannon was a six-time Golden Gloves boxing champion with a bit of MMA experience. The parties agreed to a no-time-limit war, and the knockdown count was supposed to be 30 seconds. Kimbo kicked things off briskly. Sean survived the assault and delivered a counter. The guillotine attempt infuriated Slice's corner. While the subsequent takedown angered Gannon's friends. Go, Kimbo! Get his ass! Returning to the feet, visibly tired, Kimbo kept trying to find the enemy's chin. The policeman was mixing it up to the body and the head. They were both very depleted, but refused to stop throwing heavy leather. Seven minutes in, Sean uncorked an unexpected series of elbows. Kimbo managed to get up, only to collapse on the ground from exhaustion in a matter of seconds. Slice defied gravity again, but there was no point in continuing. Kimbo lost for the first time, although you wouldn't have guessed it by looking at Shannon's face. The brawl against a competent opponent with a combat sports background exposed the gaps in Kimbo's style, yet his spirit was unquestionable. Meanwhile, a video titled Kimbo Slice vs. Police Officer went viral. It amassed over 10 million views across various platforms, surpassing any MMA content that year. Professional promoters previously preferred to ignore Slice. But now the struggle for the street fighter has unfolded. Ever since Kimbo's name first gained notoriety, rumors about his possible transition to MMA started spreading. 
It came to fruition in the summer of 2007, when news broke out that the 33-year-old Slice would make his debut in the nascent Cage Fury Fighting Championship. The adversary was none other than a true boxing legend, Olympic gold medalist and former WBO champion Ray Mercer. I got one thing to say, man. I'm going to break you both. Round number one. Having drawn hordes of fans to the TV screens, Kimbo was not going to take up much of their time. Slice pinned the prey to the fence and unleashed fury in the clinch. After a bunch of elbows, he punched the body and hit a double leg. The boxer pulled off a sweep and found himself trapped in a tight guillotine. In a span of 90 seconds in the cage, Kimbo earned $80,000, an amount that many UFC mainstays could only dream of. He showed that he was able to adjust his style to MMA and deserves to be called a mixed martial artist. Meanwhile, Slice's appearance on TV provided an unknown organization with exorbitant ratings, confirming the Bahamian's limitless star potential. It was just the beginning. So I beat Ray Mercer in a minute and 27 seconds, and I was a 10 to 1 underdog. With me dedicating myself to it and commit myself to something, I proved that to myself that I can do this. My future was born from that. After a spectacular debut, Kimbo was approached by the management of Elite XC. At that time, it was one of the fastest growing promotions in the United States. In his first bout under their banner, Slice faced the seasoned veteran, Bo Cantrell. Yeah, right Cantrell, right back in there. Oh, big uppercut, that's it. And that's it! So mind you, here's our guy who his first fight's against Mercer and his second fight's against a guy who has 20 fights. And I was concerned about it. He never was. Then people think. As soon as the bell rang, Kimbo went on the hunt. He steered the victim into an ambush and pulled the trigger. Coming, Tom Cool collected already a body oh. shot, ripping away a cat trail. Oh, yeah. This one is over Woo. before it even begins. A rear hand uppercut to the body, followed by an elbow to the head. A combo rarely seen even in modern MMA. The Bahamian got the job done in 19 seconds, and at the same time, helped the rival discover his talent for drumming. Now showered with attention, Kimbo needed a unique challenge. Tank Abbott was a former street fighter himself and had successfully turned it into a UFC career. Stewart's taking some vicious shots to the head. Tank oh, that's it. it. Back in the 90s, the wild-mannered heavyweight was the embodiment of no holds barred, but had lost his step by the time he met Slice. In a chaotic start, Kimbo landed a couple of bombs and hit the back of the head, chasing the finish. As soon as the contest continued, someone's mouth guard was found on the canvas. Before the ref had time to figure out what was happening, Slice had already thrown it into the crowd. When they finally re-engaged, Kimbo went into berserker mode. To this main event, just listen to this crowd. They actually touched gloves. The kill shot blasted Tank's head. The timer froze at 43 seconds, putting a stamp on one of the most brutal annihilations of the year. Right across the jaw, the third one's a In early 2008, Elite XC signed a deal with CBS, one of the largest TV networks in the USA. For the first time, MMA was going to be broadcast on free television in prime time. Kimbo was entrusted to headline the historic event, opposite a former Pride FC veteran, James Thompson. James declined a game of chance on the feet and leaned into his wrestling. Halfway through round two, Kimbo got a chance to load up. But was grounded again shortly after. Losing on the scorecards, at the start of the final stretch, Slice delivered an overhand, forcing a panic shot out of Thompson. 
the Bahamian negated the attempt and uncorked the finishing flurry. The Brit wanted to eat the referee alive, but this thousand yard stare spoke for itself. The main event of the evening attracted 6.5 million people to the screens, becoming the most watched MMA showdown in television history. The same Kimbo Slice who brawled in the backyards of Miami has now turned into one of the biggest attractions in the sport. Kimbo wasn't about to slow down. His next opponent was supposed to be Ken Shamrock, but he received a cut hours before the bout. As a result, Seth Petruzzelli stepped in on short notice, a former UFC fighter and a black belt in karate and BJJ. Slice quickly across. As soon as Kimbo closed the distance, he got welcomed with a fist to the face. Considering Petrozelli's resume, many hardcore fans predicted Slice's defeat, perhaps in a slightly more competitive manner. Kimbo's consolation prize was half a million dollars for 14 seconds in the cage. At Art Bar, holla at you, boy! The result upset the Elite XC bosses, but the worst was yet to come. Subsequent to the bout, Petruzzelli admitted that the organization had offered him extra money to keep the fight standing. A scandal flared up and Dana White had a field day with it. That's fucking illegal. With their main asset losing and problems with the broadcaster arising, the promotion went bankrupt. Since the day Kimbo first stepped foot in the cage, no one has tried to belittle the street fighter more than Dana White. The UFC president called Slice the toughest guy at the barbecue and believed that Elite XC events were pulling the sport back into the 90s. But as soon as the Bahamian was no longer under contract, White changed his mind. It's just a random day, I get a phone call and it's Dana. You know, on the phone he goes, I bet this is the last call you would ever, you know, expect to get. And I'm like, you know, I'm actually not so surprised, you know? You're pretty fucking bright and you know there's something there with him. Kimbo became part of the 10th season of The Ultimate Fighter and was even granted a separate presentation. What's up, Kimbo? What's up, what's up, d Jump in line there. High five, Kimbo. <laughs> yes. At the opening stage, he was matched up against Roy Nelson, a gut with a wicked punch. Who never missed a lunch. Man. Nelson did not tempt fate by exchanging on the feet. And exploited the opponent's obvious lack of ground game. He would go on to win the entire season. Comedian. <laughs> and establish himself in the UFC for years to come. With the big right hand. Kimbo, on the other hand, did not leave the show right away. He trained with the contestants and clearly gained knowledge, as well as friends. You don't meet Kimbo Slice and not like Kimbo Slice. He was the nicest guy in the world. So obviously once he started to gain some rapport with the other fighters and started to train with them, they respected his work ethic, what a good teammate he was. Everybody liked Kimbo when he left tough. Kimbo's appearance on The Ultimate Fighter brought record-breaking views, which prompted the UFC to give him a second chance. In his debut, he faced a middle-of-the-road striker in Houston, Alexander. We go! Slice hunted for the chin in his usual style. Combination. Oh, nice movement. Good to start to really move forward, Joe. Nice jab by Kimbo. Your... And even showed progress in the wrestling department. Houston, yeah. He's taking his back. Oh! He gave his opponent a proper beating on the canvas. Big ground oh, the ground game, if he was going to be a true MMA... Until he lost the position. Alexander's up. In the third round, Alexander went on the offensive. Alexander has one punch knockout power. We've seen that before. Here's what and soon dropped the Bahamian. Oh, that was a good one. Huge kick. That's the one we talked about. That was a big shot. The ending wasn't easy. Both guys are so tired, Mike. Look how slow these punches are coming. Oh, big elbow by Houston. But Kimbo didn't let the fight slip away. 
Wow. Five months after the hard-earned victory, he faced Matt Mitrione, whom he knew from their time on Toph. Kimbo surprised Mitrione in the early going with an explosive takedown. But got stuck in a triangle. Only his innate power helped him escape the strangle. When they stood back up, Matt implemented some low kicks. Nice, they're heavy. Oh, and again. Again. And again. again. Mitrione looking to finish. Forcing Slice to shoot for the legs again. Kimbo's a tough warrior, man. Uh, Ending up on top, Mitrione took Mount and sealed the deal. And Mitrione is just exhausted here. It's shown. It's it. 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 over! Kimbo had the courage to compete in the world's strongest league, but was clearly outmatched by elite athletes in terms of skill. No matter how hard he tried to make up for that deficit, the Street Fighter couldn't keep up with the true pros. Following the defeat, Slice was released from his contract. After leaving the UFC, 36-year-old Kimbo decided to venture into professional boxing before it became mainstream. Slice performed at smaller events, where he amassed a 7-0 record against questionable opposition. After nearly three years of boxing, the Bahamian hung up the big gloves. The main reason for the departure was Kimbo's desire to spend more time with his loved ones. Despite his ruthless demeanor inside the cage, Outside of it, Slice was always a family man. There's a lot of them. <laughs> my first oldest son, Kevin Jr., then my second oldest son, Kevin II, then my oldest daughter, Kevina, then my second oldest daughter, Kiera, and then my third oldest son, Kevlar, my third youngest daughter, Cassandra, my son's baby's mom, Kiana, my little grandson, Kevin III, and we have a dog named Kimmy. <laughs> That's the family. Brought up in the ghetto, Kimbo sought to give them everything that he himself was deprived of. His kids have always been his main priority in life, although the former Street Fighter's methods of education were unorthodox. Well, who's that Texan? Keytrick. So tell me about him. All right, he's taller than you, right? He like 6'3". Oh, I like big niggas. I like to drop big niggas. No, wrong thought. No, right thought. After a 2.5-year hiatus, Kimbo's fists grew itchy. In 2015, he announced his return to MMA by signing a long-term deal with Bellator. It's the fight fans want to see. First up, Kimbo faced another veteran, Ken Shamrock. They had unfinished business since their days in Elite XC. And I slept in the mouth, man. Shamrock landed a takedown at the outset. Level change, the single leg, and hit by Shamrock. And went for his signature move. Uh, it's under the net! And that is tight! But couldn't break the Bahamian. And during the assault, Slice got back up and issued a retirement check for the vet. Slice back to his feet and unloading with the right hand. It was all Ken Shamrock, now all Kimbo Slice. Drop Shamrock and they're count for me. Having secured his first MMA win in five years, Kimbo faced Dada 5000. Another street fighting alumnus whom he knew from their Miami scraps days. Both former neighborhood tough guys gassed out on their way to the cage. A smile at him to right down to his hip. So the bout was fought under the rules of oxygen deprivation. Donna. Nonetheless, Slice proved to be the fresher of the two. He can't even get his hands up anymore. Kimbo gets out of his way, he's gonna fall. Donna has no idea where he is, and that's the ground. The veteran's showdown clearly didn't live up to nostalgic expectations. Nevertheless, in his first Bellator bout, Kimbo drew over 2 million viewers to their screens. And in his next outing, he pushed the metric to 2.5 million, setting a promotion record that stands to this day. After all those years, Kimbo Slice was still a superstar. In the summer of 2016, he was preparing to step into the Bellator cage for the third time. But a month before the event, his health seriously deteriorated. The doctors diagnosed him with heart failure. The slugger's situation worsened day by day. Me on Sunday, and it was the first time he ever said this to me, and I could hear it in his voice. He said, you know, Mike, he, he was... So, he, he was like, you know, I'm scared. 
And I never heard his voice say that. Kimbo was admitted to the intensive care unit and put on a ventilator. He needed a heart transplant. However, his unstable condition made the surgery impossible. And I look up in his eyes and I'm calling him. I'm calling him, I'm calling him. And I get no answer, but it was like he was looking at me, but he weren't. And I scream. I say, he ain't answering me. Kimbo Slice passed away on June 6, 2016, at a hospital in Coral Springs. He was 42 years old. I guess whenever I decide to shave the beard, that's when I probably put Kimbo at rest. But would Kimbo ever be at rest? Kimbo Slice had an incredible journey from the streets of Miami to becoming a legendary figure in MMA. With millions of views online and appearances on some of the world's biggest stages, he made a huge impact on the combat sports industry. As the saying goes, there are athletes and then there are fighters. Kimbo was a fighter to his core, but also a father, son, and friend. The kind of guy you could always count on. What makes us who we are, to go up, to come down, get up and keep on fighting. I was designed in some kind of way to win some, to lose some. But more I'm gonna keep coming. I'm gonna keep on fighting. All day, it's hot nigga heat, man. Did you worst you tried?